Nicole Vanderpool says, greetings from Alameda County. Um, I've applied the pirate patch myth uh, so that I'm no longer blinded in bright light. One well-timed blink. What do you, you use daily from Mythbusters? Oh, okay, so the pirate eye patch myth is one of my all-time favorite experimental conclusions. And the myth is that a pirate wears an eye patch not because they lost an eye. They wear it for boarding enemy ships. And they do that because pirates are in a boat. They're outdoors all day long in the cloudless sun, blinding them all the time, right? And if you have to board another ship, you've got to go down into the hold of that ship and uh, into the into the inside of that ship, and it's pitch black in there, especially if you've been out in the sun. So the myth is that the eye patch keeps one eye ready for darkness while the other eye is fine for daylight. And when you went down and you boarded, you shifted the eye patch to the other eye and you had full sight. And we tried it out on the show and lo, it's 100% a fantastic method for keeping one eye ready for exploring the darkness. It was insane um, how well that worked. I recommend trying it. Is there, a, is there something I use daily from Mythbusters? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did an episode about the common cold, about the spreading of the common cold that has shaped every aspect of my COVID response over the past, few, past couple of years. Um, in our episode, we were replicating a very famous experiment that had been done about um, the transmission of... <laughs> snot. Um, and so what we did was we took a pair of my glasses and we carefully glued in this tiny rubber pipette, this like infinitesimal little rubber tube uh, that dispensed a clear liquid down the side of my nose that would require me to constantly deal with it like you would if you had a runny nose. And uh, my goal was to deal with it exactly like it was a runny nose. And frankly, you know, uh, so we had a little pump it went back here to a pump and we could adjust how much was coming out and we adjusted it until it felt like a natural rate. And then uh, Jamie and I and Carrie and I think Troy and Grant were there as well. I think it was all of us, yeah. Um, we had dinner around a table uh, and we ate and passed stuff to each other. And, uh, oh, the fluid that was dripping on me was a fluid, we went through dozens and dozens of different paints to find a fluid that was both non-toxic to skin and glowed really, really brightly under black light. We finally determined the one that worked for us. And then with my nose having a pre, uh, uh, post-nasal drip, drip, uh, we had a dinner over about an hour. And then we stepped back and we turned on a black light and the table was an absolute murder scene of snot. It was disgusting. It was absolutely, yeah. Uh, at the very beginning of COVID, uh, we wrote to Discovery and said, you guys should release this episode for free. And they did. That was absolutely the right thing to do because the information there is incredible. My favorite part about that story is that Carrie Byron, who is a germaphobe of the first class, had nothing around her. Like, at the beginning of COVID, I was like, I don't know how this is gonna go, but I know Carrie Byron's gonna be fine. <laughs> that was like the one thing I knew when lockdown started. Carrie Byron's gonna be fine. Like, I don't have to worry about her at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that episode was a real eye-opener. Totally amazing. <laughs> Jim Horton. <laughs> <laughs> was it a hard transition for Jamie going from being your boss to being an equal on the show? Hang on, he has a second part to this. Um, it seemed like sometimes he still tried to act as the boss when making decisions. Yes, yes. Jamie's a natural supervisor, an absolutely natural supervisor, like that grown. Um, and he was an excellent boss. He gave me raises when I asked for them. He gave me fantastic feedback. He let me learn a lot of stuff as a boss. But eventually, after you know six, five years of working on commercials together, I couldn't. I, I didn't like. I didn't like working for Jamie anymore. Uh, and I wanted to do other things. So I went off, and I I didn't work for Jamie again after I left his shop in ninety eight, ninety seven. Um, so from the time I left his shop. 
and us filming the pilots is five years, give or take. Um, so there was no, there was no, um, what do you call it, hierarchy. And we didn't fall into a natural hierarchy, although Jamie's 10 years older than me, so I tend to defer, I tended to defer, especially back then when I was in my 30s and he's in his 40s. Um, I, 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 def I definitely was more, uh, I demurred more back then than I did later on. Um, Jamie's, <laughs> I will say one thing about him that makes him a natural supervisor is he's sure he's always right. Um, and the thing is, is, he usually is. To be fair, he's usually right. Um, but if he's not, it, it's almost inconceivable for him to see that. <laughs> There's to you, Jamie. Uh, but uh, like I said, a natural supervisor naturally falls, like you put him in a group of people, uh, he is definitely going to be uh, a leader, a, a real natural one. Um, no, it was. Look, I mean, the parts that were difficult weren't difficult because he used to be my boss. They're more difficult because we're just very different personality types and we have different ways of executing solutions. <laughs> Ali5050 uh, asks, in the duct tape canyon episode, this is when we escaped from the Grand Canyon using only duct tape, um, did you ever have any doubt that the duct tape wouldn't work and that you were in real danger? Well, yes and no. Look, I mean, an episode like that, just like Duct Tape Island, um, it's not like Jamie and I are stranded and spending every night out in the cold. And we were being very open and upfront about that when we were filming those episodes. However, the finale of Duct Tape Canyon was that we build uh, rafts out of duct tape and bubble wrap and escape on some rapids. And the finale was shot actually not in the Grand Canyon. We didn't shoot any of the episode in the Grand Canyon because Grand Canyon is such a protected wildlife sanctuary that um, it's it's exceedingly difficult, exceedingly expensive. And you, you don't, yeah, you don't want to go sully this national landmark. Um, when you want to shoot Grand Canyon type stuff, you go to Moab, Utah, which is where they shot the Lone Ranger and a million other things. It is also one of the most beautiful places on the planet. I fell so in love with Moab, Utah. Um, yeah, an incredible place. Um, but the finale of the episode was us actually riding our river rafts out of duct tape and bubble wrap on class five rapids like the real dangerous, upsettingly spooky rapids. Uh, and we had tons of support. Uh, the, 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 the experts that we had hired to be our safety officers on the episode found us some class five that were like just accessible for me and Jamie. And they, but, but here, here is the, here is the layout of how it went down, which is Jamie, didn't even ride his boat on the rapids. He carried it across this rock fall and jumped in at the bottom of the rapids, which is a classic Jamie Brilliant thinking outside the box solution. I wanted to do this snaky curve through them. <clears throat> and what they told me was, okay, here's the thing. When you're uh, going on the rapids, if you bail out of the boat, the most important thing <clears throat> is that you get your feet up and above the water. You wanna be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, <laughs> that was real, but I'm fine. Um, you wanna get your, I'm gonna do it again. You wanna get your feet up above the water and you wanna be like this. And this is because in, when you're in rapids, there's all this rock stuff underneath and you don't wanna be like this with your body vertical and get your feet caught. Because if your foot gets caught in something under the rapids, the rapids push you over and nothing's gonna get you out, apparently. That's a pretty scary thing to be told. You gotta keep your feet up or the ground will suck you under. And then they said, however, <laughs> if you ditch here, you don't wanna do that because there's this kind of formation and you'll wanna do the, so it's really critical, they pointed out the experts to me specifically. If you bail here, you gotta do your legs with this. And if you bail there, you gotta do the opposite. And doing the wrong thing in both cases will be really dangerous. And I'm like, check. <laughs> this sounds really scary. Um, and obviously I survived. Uh, I did bail out of the boat. The boat 
failed on me and I ditched and I ditched in exactly the place. I had to do the opposite of sticking my feet out of the water. And, you know, one of the things I noticed regularly on Mythbusters over the whole course of production was that when I imbue my body with a mission critical set of instructions, my body remembers those instructions. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I paused here because that's an emotional thing to point out because there's a bunch of times, like in those rapids, where I'm starting out, I'm thinking there's all these experts, you know, we're going to be fine. At the same time, there's still a chance that something could go wrong, and that's spooky. So, <coughs> excuse me, if there's <coughs> any chance at all that things could go wrong, I want to make sure that I, if I have control to make them go right, I do. And when I looked up at the end of that episode, when I looked up at the end of that shoot day, and I saw that I had remembered precisely their careful advice and followed it to the T in the positions that I was in, I was like, thanks, body. Thanks, physical form. I'm traveling around this mortal coil in. Uh, I really appreciate that. Good teamwork, everybody. Um, it's also quite humbling. And that's real. Right? Like, <clears throat> I'm very grateful to my body for how it's performed for me over the years. And Mythbusters, those key moments on Mythbusters were really, really, really specific. So the answer is, I didn't have any doubts that the duct tape would work for the purposes of the episode. But yeah, there was a little real danger, as there always was in, 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 in our episodes. You know, we really tried to make it work so that anybody could do the stunts we were doing. But at the same time, there were some key ways in which Jamie's and all five of us hosts, our ability to stay calm under certain kinds of duress, under specific conditions, really saved our ass. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions. You get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.